It's 6 o'clock, top of the hour, and, uh, you know, let's get going. Let's get going. I'm excited to be here. My name is Don Legere, and I'll be your host this evening. And uh, for this Creation Works webinar, uh, information tonight you're going to learn will absolutely, absolutely help your business. And... Um, one thing I'd like to say about that, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, Michael Camry, uh, we've got a webinar that he did uh, for us so that he could tell us what he was using as far as content marketing. And, uh, you know, he had some very, very, very good words to say about the information that he learned from us. As a matter of fact, Michael has a, an offline business. And uh, his business improved. It was remarkable. <laughs> it was remarkable the amount of attention, the amount of orders he received uh, for for his offline business. He his business improved over 500 percent. So you know that's exciting when you know he takes this information and applies it to his niche market. And he was able to create profit, you know, within four or five weeks' time. And uh, that continued through the months. And uh, it, it's, it's been a remarkable turnaround uh, for him and his business. Because not only is he known now in his local area, but uh, Michael Camry is known throughout the nation for his products for his, uh, for his um, bird rescue business, for his knowledge on parrots. And he took that and took the creation and uh, went all the way with it. And, you know, he's been featured in uh, local articles in the newspaper, which further improved his status as the knowledge leader and the go-to guy if you had uh, any type of exotic birds and, you know, what is to care for them? How do you clip their wings? You know, how, you know what do you feed them? And he was the go-to guy for that. And not only is he the go-to guy in his niche, but he's the go-to guy in LinkedIn is where he's found a lot of his prospects uh, simply because people on LinkedIn make money and if they make money, chances are they own exotic birds. And that turns out to be true. So from there, his, he's improved his market reach, I, I, I would say, a hundredfold. And he's uh, once again enjoying life. But once you start curating, you've got you've to keep curating. And uh, curating content, for those who don't know, is the ability to take someone else's information, someone else's ideas and concepts, and not present them as your own, but present them with your own point of view. And that is curation in a nutshell. So, you know, when I'm curating for the uh, curation marketing blog, I don't know if uh, all of you have visited it, but please do. Please visit our blog. Just, uh, you know, hit curationworks.com, uh, click on the blog, and give us some loving, you know, give us some likes. But the idea when I'm curating there, uh, I'm curating, you know, based on the concepts that are important to the people who I'm trying to teach uh, curation. And the things that I'm putting up there is important information uh, for you. So it's, it's narrow in scope but it is increasingly getting more and more traffic, uh, specifically because I'm keeping it on topic. So that's creation. And I find the ideas based on what's happening now in that market, what's happening now, what's trending now in that space. So ideally, through, through, uh, through the RSS feeds that I peruse each day, you know, I'll pick out the one article that I believe is the most pertinent to the students 
of my content creation course. And to me, that's important because th this is information that you could start applying today. And um, just like James did in his article today that he posted in our Skype group, so if you're a member of that Skype group, please uh, show James a little lovin'. Uh, go check out his article and uh, give him a thumbs up there and uh, let him know how he's doing. Uh, and, and that's the idea of creation. Um, you have to use your own personality whenever you're curating someone else's information. Uh, you, you're building your own your own argument, your own concept, your own con consciousness around an idea that someone else is or has promoted. And that's creation in a nutshell. And not only do you share it on your blog, but you share it in your sh uh, social networks. You get out there and you start talking about it. You let people know that, hey, I got a new article out there. Let me know what you think. Now, you know, one of the things I'm going to talk to uh, to you tonight, just to let you know, is the whole aspect of social media marketing and aggregating content for that. Because there are, you know, as you know, there are a lot of tools out there. And, you know, my argument for using those tools is, you know, they're great, but you still need your voice. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well. But, you know... But for creation for people who don't know what it is, all you're doing is taking someone else's information, one of the influencers in your niche, and you are molding it with your voice so that people on your list can understand what it is that you're trying to do, you know, what subject you're trying to reach them with. And really it's that easy. So tonight let's talk about, you know, content marketing and five easy Five, five easy little steps. Now, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, quotes is from Anne Handley from Karata.com. Now, when you go to Karata.com, check out the pricing. Now, whenever you do a search online for, you know, any uh, curation type services, you're, you're going to find that they are geared toward big business. They are geared toward the really successful small business. They aren't really geared toward the individual uh, home entrepreneur or, or the individual multi-level marketer or the individual network marketer, the individual salesman. You know, that kind of service just is not geared toward them. It's very, very, very expensive. So they have two options. Either they do it themselves or they hire someone to do it. And this is something that you can offer if in fact one of the things that you offer is you know, web space and the services that go along with it. But content is king. And marketers are publishers now. We have to be. And we have to provide information to our clientele, to our people, to our subscribers that relate to the subject at hand. You know, when you look at the content curation's blog, it is all information relating to, you know, content marketing or content curation marketing or social media marketing, things that are pertinent to the, for the students of our curation course. And, you know, that's, that's not, you know, that's by design. And, uh, you know, at the same time, as you share it with your networks, guess what? You know, you might earn sales and earn some commissions. That's great. But more importantly, uh, you know, it, it gets you out there as an expert as well by using the information that we're putting in there. Now, also on the, on the uh, Curation Marketing blog, you're going to see more original content from us as well. And, uh, you know, that is part of the whole deal with, the, you know, having a blog that will return money to you. Because the customers changed. They're looking for the information you have. And they're looking for things that will 
that will drive success to their doorsteps. Instead of going out and hunting like in the old days, you, you've got to lure them in. You've got to give them that information because your customers changed. And it's that simple. So identify your topic. You know, what niche are you in? You know, on what topic do you want uh, your prospects to hear from you every single day? Because believe me, you know, if you are wanting to use uh, content marketing, you have to be involved in it. You know, if you're a small business person, if you're a home entrepreneur, you have to be involved in it. And you have to be involved in it every single day. So, you know, you're thinking of going on holidays, you better bring your cell phone because you have to be interacting uh, with that group almost every single day. Or have people in your group doing it for you. You know, on what topic do you have a unique perspective or a passion for? You know, I always talk about uh, windmills. You know, if you have a passion for windmills, fantastic. You can make money from that. If you have a passion for widgets, you can make money from that. There is one site that I've been following since last year. I think I talked about it last week. But the point is, in January, she had... Maybe over, just slightly over a million, maybe just a million. I don't know. I can't remember the number. I went to, uh, you know, I wanted to get the exact figures. But the point is, uh, you know, she went from a million to over 16 million views. And now when you go to her site, it's full of advertisements. So Google's paying her now. And good for her. She can have a good smile on her face because she figured out her niche. She kept providing that information to them daily that, hey, people were sharing it. And over 16 million views over a 12-month period. I, I think right now she's sitting at two, 2 million views a month. And, and that's incredible. She figured, out her, she figured out her topic. She figured out her niche. And she does a lot of original content, too, in her newsletter. So she's becoming known as the thought leader in that group, as you can be too. It doesn't matter what, what it is that, that you want to become a thought leader in. Widgets, windmills, whatever. It's all very exciting. So I bet, identify that topic. Figure out who the bloggers are. Figure out who the analysts are. Figure out where the trade publications are. Go to the journals. Figure out who the industry leaders are. Now follow someone you would like to be like the most. You know, just who do you think is the coolest guy in the world? And start following them. Get on their RSS list. You know, start grabbing their feed and looking at it and posting about it. Putting your own opinion behind it. And that's how you do it. So aggregate, prioritize, organize content from your influencers that complement your topic. So our topic on our blog is social media marketing, content curation, content marketing, and we try to stay in those narrow bands. You know, if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're on the blog and you, and you click on curation topics, you'll see content creation, content creation practices, content creation marketing, content marketing, social media marketing, and search engine optimization. Those are the topics we talk about. So we prioritize things in those topic areas. Using blog posts, videos, newsletters, RSS feeds, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We follow them all. And we prioritize them. And we grab the best topic. And we curate. We don't pirate. You know, a lot of sites out there just grab the whole thing and throw it up there. That's not how you do it. You always have to attribute your sources. You always have to link to the original, co uh, to the original content. We like to show you to link to the article and link to the source of the article. 
So if the article is found on ezine.com, you would have a separate link there for ezine.com. And, you know, that's basically fair use practices. And, um, you know, you can... Geez, it's amazing how much time it saves you if you know what you're doing when you're curating your topic and you know your topic well. And you can include topic that you don't really agree with, but in a general way you do. But what that does is it creates conversation uh, within your social network, and that's what you want it to do. So you want to get it out to your social network. So curation and creation. Now, what James did today, he basically created it, but he used curation to help him along. But those are, that's the best way to, to feed a thirsty mind, you know, to get that information out there that people are looking for. So you want to blog about it, and once you blog about it, you want to get it out there on social media. And you want to send it out there on an email to your, to your blog subscribers. And you want to have an RSS feed for them. Of course, the you know, usual likes, shares, buttons, you know, on every post you do as well is very, very important. But here's the curation caution. Once you begin curating, once you start putting together that subject for you and you're starting to get subscribers, you're starting to get views, you're starting to get visitors and um, you know one of those things that you're going to need to learn too as well uh, when you're in the back office of your blog you know, you're know, you going to have to get your Google Analytics set up in there for yourselves as well so you can keep track of, uh, track of the number of views uh, the number of new visitors, the number of unique visitors that are starting to come to your blog. Uh, because as the traffic grows, and, uh, you know, the, one of the ways of measuring, you know, whether or not your, your, your curation efforts are working is in the number of visitors, in the number of unique visitors. But more importantly, you know, is the information on your blog directing people to take some sort of action, like get on your list, for example, I think, I, I, you know, I, I think that's a proper thing to do. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, if you look at the Curation Works blog, it's going to be changing over time because um, I'm tweaking it right now just to do just that, you know, get more and more people on the, on the mailing list. But, you know, you got to keep people wanting more. You've got to you've got to keep people basically well fed and if we can keep that stream of fresh and relevant information out there for you um, you know it's good for you and uh, everyone knows a stale website is going to kill you so if you're going to start with the curation you can't stop and now it sounds like a lot of work right oh my god I got <laughs> I've got I've got social media marketing, I've got blogging, I've got all this, I've got all that, but it's easy when you follow the videos in the back office and you understand who your RSS feeds are coming from. It's easy each morning to get up uh, and, and go through your RSS feeds quickly, decide on that one most important article that, you're, that you believe your audience is looking for that day and never curate anything that is more than a day old it's got to be current that's the other thing about curating it's got to be current so do that those are uh, some of the things you're going to learn back there and it's easier and it's easier done than I'm talking about believe me so your goals the content you produce and curate is designed to achieve a wide variety of goals, and one of those is getting people to subscribe to your website. So you've got to make those smart content decisions. Everything you put on your website has to take you closer to your objectives. So really think about what it is you're, 
you're putting out there on, on on your website? Is it staying on topic? Is it moving people in a progressive way so that you can get them to take some sort of action? Like, like us more for more information. Or get on our subscriber list, and so on and so forth. Get our newsletter. Grab this file for download, because you can curate it all. And here's the best practices. Limit the number of articles you curate from any one source. I think you'll find on our blog we curate from a, from a whole variety of sources. Uh, we can't be guilty of following one source too much. And we only re reproduce you know, very small portions of the headline or the article in order to get our point across. And we've got our template in the back office for you all that all you really need to do when putting together your blog post is to open a notepad editor, uh, open up whatever it is you're going to curate, and cut and paste, cut and paste. And type in your own words here, type in your own words there. Everything's there for you. But we only use a small portion of the original article. And that's, that's good for us because Google penalizes people for duplicate com, uh, content. And if they see it in a block quote, we're pretty good there, especially if we're only using a snippet of their article. Uh, sharing images, always use uh, a tiny thumbnail, unless, of course, it's your very own image. Um, retitle every, every content, you everything you curate. Don't curate it as the same title. Google won't pick you up. They'll just skip you right over. So, you know, if you're curating a uh, article from our website, for example, and you're going to curate social media marketing, marketing pains for small business, you want to retitle that, right? You absolutely want to retitle that because you don't want to have that duplicate comp. Uh, content out there on uh, on Google. All right, more uh, best practices here. Identify the source of the article. Link to the original article prominently. Don't, you know, in the old days we used to market and they used to say put no follow links on external links, but we don't want to do that anymore. We want to let, we want to let, you know, the spiders follow every link they possibly can, because it only bring us more loving from from everybody out there. So, be creative in everything you curate, and always add your voice. It improves your personal profile, and it improves your leverage online, because people who are visiting will start viewing you as the as the uh, the go-to guy, as the guru, as the guy who has all the answers, just like Mike Camry found out. So make your commentary longer than the excerpt that you're reposting as well. And I think we're pretty good at that too. So if you're looking for good examples of curating content, you know, go to our blog. Go to curationworks.com forward slash blog. And, you know, if you have any ideas at all, you know, let us know. Get out there. Get on the comment. Now, from the blog, let's talk about this a little bit. You know, social media marketing pains for small business. Now, I touched on this a little bit earlier, and I... You know, I, I don't think we're going to, you know, spend uh, a lot of time on these subjects. But, you know, the point is that, you know, there are a number of issues facing people who are trying to make money at home. I mean, it's stressful. we got a lot of stuff to do. And, you know, if you're thinking of adding content creation to the, to the mix... You don't have to go full on into it. You know, even if you begin curating just, you know, one article every two days, you know, it'll go a long way to 
to help you, uh, especially with the social media marketing. And um, I'm finding that simply just posting, you know, uh, two or three articles a week on the Curation Works blog, we're we're moving up. We're moving up in in the Google rankings. Uh, we're moving up in the rankings overall. You know, our best day we had well over seventeen thousand page views. So I think we're doing something right there, and I think the way that we've structured it for as a model for our students to follow is a very good SEO way as well. But um, you know, there are other tools out there that are helping us along the content creation marketing um, strategy way. You know, there is, um, you know, not only do we, do we don't have time to do this, sometimes we think we don't, but the other thing too is, you know, how do I, how do I pay for this? You know, if you've got a successful small business, uh, you know, like Tina, you know, our daughter, she hires someone to do this for her. So it's easier for her. But she doesn't just surrender it to her. She takes control of it too. And she's involved too. So if you're that at that stage where you don't want to learn another, you know, marketing uh, strategy, you know, social media marketing strategy, then, then you can pass it on. Because within that strategy, you can use content creation as well. And using content creation will do a number of things for you. Number one, you can attract prospects and customers to your business 62% less than traditional media. That's, that's a big savings. So if done right, and you're curating content as well as you know, marketing, marketing it through social media, you can do well. And this post here, to make money, and the best way to get subscribers is to provide the content that people are looking for. And that's why creation works. Because you can, you can post three articles in the time it takes you to write one. So if you're writing one article a day, you know, Write one, write one article every two days and curate in between. And you'll have some very good content on your blog for people to follow. But social media creation tools have arrived and they're on the doorstep and more are on the horizon. So it's a good post to, to read as an overview and, and learn more a little bit uh, about the tools like Buffer, Drum up. Is anyone using that? Is anyone using Buffer or Drum up? How about Hootsuite? Is anyone using Hootsuite to help them along with their with their curation marketing or with their social media marketing? Because those are are three of the big ones, and uh, they allow you to uh, curate content and they provide the articles for you. And you pick and choose which one you want to curate, uh, which one you want to publish, uh, whether automatically or or at, at a specific period of time. So these tools are available to us now. Is anyone using uh, one of those social media marketing tools like Hootsuite? Anyone? No one? No one's using them yet? No one is, eh? I am playing around with Buffer. I'm playing around with Buffer a little bit, and they allow me to use Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm going to uh, try the other others out as well, just to see, you know, if there's a difference, you know, if there's a response difference between the uh, one or two. But Buffer is pretty cool. 
it, it allows me to go to Twitter and Facebook for free. And, uh, you know, if I upgraded, they got three more. So, you know, I, I'm on the fence whether I should upgrade or not. Because I, I think we're pretty good at social media marketing as it goes. But I'm going to keep playing around with it because it might be worthwhile to have something like that. But the danger is, and this is one of the things that I point out on the blog post, is that if you're going to curate content, if you're using content creation as a marketing strategy, you cannot, you cannot rely solely on aggregated content, which this is. Uh, they mistakenly call it content creation, but it's aggregated content for you to repost on your on your uh, social network. So be careful with that. But you can take that and you can curate your own voice with it, because that's the whole point with content creation, isn't it? That's the whole point, because you want to, you know, what do you stand for? Right? That's one of the questions you have to ask. You know, what do you believe about about this or that or the product or, or, or the article you're curating? And, you know, who are you trying to reach? And what is it are they looking for? And these are the considerations you have to give uh, any new tool that you're going to use for social media marketing. But it's something that I, I think can work very, very well for people. But it's up there for you to take a look at. Uh, let me know how you do with it. You know, go on the blog and uh, make a comment. And, uh, and then that way we can respond to you. Let me know what you're using, what's working, uh, and what isn't working for you. It can only help the community. It can only help the community. Uh, the ever-evolving uh, content marketing strategy. I thought this was an important blog post, and this is from the blog as well. One of the things that we do, or don't do, is we do not talk enough about intelligent, com uh, intelligent content. You know, we don't really know a lot about that. And intelligent content really uh, you know, is it has to be structurally rich and semantically categorized, which means search engines have to go to your site. They have to go to a site map. They have to see how thing is structured. You have to have your category structured in a way that makes sense. It just can't be willy-nilly. Uh, your tags have to follow some sort of, you know, logic. You know, th th these are essential. You know, your posts, your posts have to have an H1 tag. Your posts should have an H2 tag. Your posts should have an H3 tag. Your, show, your, your, your posts should be, you know, optimized in a way that, that you can be found. And, and a lot of times we don't do it. Uh, a lot of times we skip over the alt tags for images. We skip over the alt tags for for links. You know, I'm guilty of it. I, <laughs> I I don't do it all the time. You know, we're guilty of not filling out the uh, uh, the schema the the schema uh, uh, profile for the post. Some of our posts have it, some of them don't. So these are just some of the things that I, I think we have to be aware of. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you categorize things in an appropriate way, it, it's easy for you to search for that article or that thing. You know, right from your blog. You know, it should be as easy as walking up to the do you remember the library? You used to walk up to the index box and you'd grab your AB and you'd pull the box out and you'd search through the cards. That's how easy it should be. So it has to be intelligent content. And, it, you know, it's how everything is structured. 
So a very good article. I'd love for you all to go read it and uh, let me know what you think about that. So your creation strategy, let's uh, wrap up with that. <clears throat> I talked a little bit about uh, a little bit tonight about the Creation Works blog. It's a it's a work in progress, believe me. <laughs> and um, you know, the idea is to be strategic about your topic selection. And when I put the blog together, I thought, you know. Do I want to make it for the whole audience or do I want to tighten it up a little bit so that, you know, it follows a little bit of the of the training that we give here? And, um, you know, it's good to stick to the training. It's good to provide you information. It's good that we're moving up in the rankings. And, um, you know, it's a good example for you all to follow. So, you know... Our, 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 our topic selection is pretty tight. I th you know, we're going to keep it that way as well. We're going to vary our sources, which we do now, because I think it's important for you to understand that, you know, our way of doing something may not be the right way, may, be the, may not be the only way. Um, you know, if I'm only presenting ideas to you that present the B2B or the B2C community, that won't be of much value. You know, if I'm only presenting information to you that helps the real estate industry, <laughs> that's not going to be much value to anybody either. You know, I want to be general. I, I want to be able to provide posts that will help the network marketer, provide posts that will help, you know, the home entrepreneur make headway. You know, earn some money here online. You know, just like, you know, shiftfrequency.com went from 1 million to 16.5 million views just because she provided content is astounding. And how profitable can that be? So be selective of what you're throwing out there. Organize your content so it follows some sort of logic. So it's taking your prospects on a journey. You want them to be interested. You want them to visit you over and over and over again. Content creation can do that. I, I, can, I couldn't even imagine what I'd do with 16 million visitors over a specific period of time. My goodness. So adhere to those best practices, and uh, you're going to add value by providing your insights, your opinions, and your, and your context to the entire subject, to the entire niche. And that's exciting because by following, by curating a topic, you become an expert in the topic by design because you're always reading about your topic. You're getting more excited about your topic. And it, it just keeps you going. It just keeps you going. You know, it's like a drug. You just want more of it. You, you just want to learn more. And content creation can do that. And you will become a leader in no time. So ladies and gentlemen, creation works. And I believe the name says it all. So please visit creationworks.com and become a member if you're not. And uh, if you are a member or not a member, visit the creationworks.com forward slash blog. And let me know what you think. And with that, I'd like to wish you all the very best possible results at work this week. Bigger than you could hope or imagine. And thank you all for joining us this evening. Janet, did you want to come up and say anything? She's good. Jan's good. I knew she was good. Anyone have any questions? Anything? What's the address for that call, Jan? There is a total, a total takeover call at the top of the hour if anyone is involved in that. 
I think it has something like 24,000 members over five days or something. No questions? Anything? James, do you have anything? All right, listen. Everyone have a good week curating. Uh, if you're not curating content yet, you know, log in. Watch the video. Set yourself up. Get blogging. Because without a blog, you, you've got nothing. Without information for your prospects, you got nothing. You know, it's... Um, You've got to get it out there, and uh, you've got to do the work. If your business is important, you've got to get out there and do the work. You've got to do the social marketing. In other words, you've got to knock on doors. And uh, I can't think of an easier way to knock on doors than using, you know, curated content. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. Not a lot of people could operate a blog you know, if you had to have if you had to have original content each and every time around, it's just it it just totally amazes me. So you can't get to the top of your niche; it takes a bit of work, but uh, it can be done quickly and easily with curation. Quickly and easily being you know three to six months it might take a year, but when it happens, it happens. It just starts snowballing. Because everybody starts introducing everybody to what you've got going. And it's exciting. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. I'll hang around if anyone has questions. Just pop it in text chat.